Hello everybody and welcome to race number 5 of the season here at 8 Bull Super Speedway. We are back on one another plate track that we're going to go on by here in Massachusetts. The second of three that goes around here for the NSDCA 280. Should be a very fun race how it's going to be. Let's get on down to your starting lineup. On the pole for this event will be Bobby Frazier in the 41 next to him. Patrick Smith in the 15. That's mainly with the way how they are in the lineup there. It's uh, third, Adam Garcia. Fourth, Bobo Jones. Fifth, TJ Haley. Sixth, Eugene DeMax. Seventh, the Sean Art. Eighth, Peter Onjak. Ninth is Ryan Acosta in the top 10. Matthew Eves, your previous race winner over at Papyrus Motorsports Park. A huge win for that money line Supra. So hopefully that changes a lot of things. Let's get on down to the rest of your starting lineup from 11th and 12th on back. And as you're looking through, some notables on the... On the driver's list there that are here looking for some good runs. Some had some really bad runs that really fell apart in the standings. Even though it is early on, still a lot can happen though. So don't give up. Man Evans, of course, not really starting off strong there. On well, the final row, we have Jay Cook and Nico Ketchum. And real quickly, just go through the top 10 in points because we are about ready to take the green flag here. With the command. Uh, Eli Bright is your points leader tied with Travis Crampton. Nico Ketchum third in points. Adam Garcia, Charles Sammer complete the top five. Or my bad, man. Evans actually is six in the points. I'm thinking the other driver who's uh, unsponsored that's not doing well there. Uh, Joshua Sicoli, Ryan Acosta, Steve Pollard, and Eugene Max complete your top ten. Or no, it wasn't underfunded. It was, um, was Crassus who I was thinking of. It was uh, black and orange. My bad. Evans. And right in the nick of time, there's the command. So we're going to let them roll off here. I'm going to take a quick drink of a Mr. Pib right now. And all 42 are going to roll off. Good sign right there. Love this view that they get on the flybys here. So we're going to be here for 30 laps for today's Xfinity race that will go on by. Cup race will have 40. Now, if you notice the skid marks here, that was, of course, during when they had practice, so won't get too crazy, I promise you there. <laughs> but Pace Car is going to make a dive down on the right-hand side to Pit Road. Now, remember, if they take that white flag when they're under yellow and somebody has an issue, they're going to still cross the line as the leader, so we'll see what happens. Pace Car makes a dive down Pit Road. Here we go. My bad, it's Patrick Smith, not Bobby Frazier. Green flag is out. We're underway at 8-Bull for the SDCA 280. I thought it was uh, Bobby Frazier that had the pull, but I guess not. So my apologies there. It is Patrick Smith that did get the pull there. Speaking of Patrick, who's uh, really not been having a good season so far. He's been on the rough end there. And last season even, too, really uh, has been well for that 15 team. Him and Eves, ironic enough, really struggled in the season. But uh, Smith trying to at least redeem himself. Eves already has gotten his win. Now the eyes will be on the Alliance Truck Part Supra. I just heard some contact. And are we under caution? No, but Charles Samper has got some right side damage in the 39 Coca-Cola Chevrolet. And I think he has left side damage. I'm trying to see if we can get a view on that. Coke Vanilla Zero Chevrolet and a little bit on the left side, but primarily on the right side. And that just separates some of the drivers in the back. And uh, Sanford's teammate Steve Pollard's got some damage in the 57. Hmm. Wonder what happened there, but in the meantime, let's work our way back up to the front. Oh my god, Garrett Sidner and. Oh, no, they are going to go forward wide. That's in the middle of the pack here. Stapleton and Breedy probably in the worst spot. And Breedy made a little contact with the Powerade Chevrolet. And, oh, boy, this is where you got to be really careful. I mean, they've done four wide here in the past in both series. But the main thing you just got to do is not lean. And this is normally the trouble spot coming into turn two when you come off the corner. Oh, and Eve's just... Trying to not be that person to get clipped at the last second. Durley's going to settle, but behind him, man, Nick Breeding's been that car. It's in the sucker hole right there, and he's trying to find a way to the inside. And having no luck, he is really in no man's land right now. And he's trying to find that hole to go. 
but now they're going to settle back out to three wide. Thank goodness right there. And now the drivers behind, like Skylar Dixon, Amanda Evans, Joshua Sicoli, Jake Cook, Carter Friesen, Jackie Tang, Nico Ketchum, Brandon Krasta, uh, Cole Baker, Benjamin Thomas, and then, of course, Steve Pollard, Charles Sanford are off the paces, the 39. Oh, wow. Steve Pollard also a bit off the pace as well, so I have no idea what happened to the S3 Motorsports drivers, but not a good start so far. As Onjak had the lead, he led the lap earlier. Now Smith and Bright are going to literally freight train the Gangska BMW. How about Adam Garcia? What a start to the season that that Twitch TV Dodge is having. Whoa, and Sean Arden, Daniel Bouchard, a little bit of contact right there. We're bouncing off each other left and right, but... I'll tell you what, that six car has been a very strong qualifier and a very strong finisher. And amazing enough, he's not even the points leader. Isn't that something? I don't know how he's managed to pull that off, but that's 16. We said last season, you know, when, when next season comes around, this season here, he was going to be the one driver to keep an eye on. And boy, we weren't getting around. He's already been making very strong statements, but I think deep down, you already know he wants a win. That is a no-brainer to that six machine. And so far, that switch to Dodge has really been good so far for this team. Three wide at the line. Bobo Jones led that lap. On Jack in the middle. And now Colton Schwartz, Eli Bright, and Derek Hamill working their way on the inside line. So far, though, we've kept ourselves green flag raising a fifth of the way complete. But for the time being, you know, at least because of that small wreck, we'll take a look uh, if we do have a caution or at least uh, have green flag pit stops or any of that type happen. I mean, we'll take a look and see what happened. But... I am very curious to know what happened because that was all in lap one, and if you could tell, no caution. Andrew Miller now working his way to the front of the pack. Now, this track is very unique because this is a, a play track where you got to matter where you qualify. You start off on the rear of the field because of how you start off with a left-hander and end with a right-hander. You're really not going to gain a lot of momentum. You're really just going to be in a certain area. You start towards the front of the field, then look what happens. You're going to stay in the front of the field. And you can see two of those drivers that's really benefited, let alone four of them. It's by Bobby Frazier, Patrick Smith, Eli Bright, and Bobo Jones, all four of them. They started in the first couple of rows, and look at where they're at. Now Hamill's going to look for the lead. On Jack, tried to look underneath too, but couldn't do it. Some of these guys are trying to do what they can to catch up to Alex Tanker in the 50. And the main goal is they were trying to get around Steve Pollard in the 57. They did it. Sanford's only going 186. Pollard's going 194. Both of them have lost the draft. These guys are up to speed, but you could tell they got held up there. So Looks like Tang's going to catch up. Carter Friesen, Brandon Kras is going to catch up, and Right now, Jay Cook and the others behind. They're going to have to wait. They're just going to have to keep reeling whoever they can. And I know one driver that really wants is your defending champion, Skylar Dixon, because he has been not having a good start so far to the season. He really needs a lot done. Looking at Joseph Srigley in the 0-1. And, and they deal with Charles Sanford, the 39. And now they're having to really find a way to get around. And, man, the driver who's been having a lot of difficulties were Eli Bright and Derek Hamill. And they are getting bunched over here. Oh, my. Colton Schwartz in the 60 trying to be extremely patient. 
And Haley behind him, man. He is not... He's not letting up. That's allowing some of those guys that lost that pack earlier to catch up and... That allowed Sicoli to really reel in. Catch up in others and... I mean, I'm telling you, that 39 is off the pace with that damage and he needed a caution earlier and he is not going to get his luck. He's a driver that was doing really well in the points and Nicholas Gare almost just dumped the Coke Vanilla Zero Sugar Chevrolet there. See Jonathan Hoff, Nathan Stapleton, Alex Tanker, Benjamin Thomas managing to get by Gary Owen, Joseph Sprigley, Austin Yoakum. There's Dixon. Wow, they were going four wide trying to get around the 39. Sprigley has just been having a really hard time trying to get around the 39 because he's just been on the wrong end of the stick. And Amanda Evans has been under the same boat too. So you notice that some of these drivers are able to get around that damage car of Charles Sanford. And then some drivers, not so much. Now both the unsponsored cars are trying to get by. And Sanford's coming out pit road finally, which I have no idea why he didn't do that earlier. But there's the officials trying to tell him, get down pit road, please. Meanwhile, back up to the front, you're seeing some of the drivers are trying to regroup and try to get back up there. So these drivers really kind of didn't separate too badly because you see behind TJ Haley, there's just a little bit of a gap there, but nothing too bad. But the ones who really got held up, they are paying the price. And Sanford finally getting some work done on that Coke Vanilla Zero Sugar Chevrolet, getting some tires and trying to buff out that car, especially on the sides because I'm curious to know what heck happened there. There's Steve Pollard. That'll probably be the next driver that comes down pit road. It won't surprise me. Sanford's car finally repairing the damage and they're out and away and you could tell why they stayed out but now the problem is this so that 39 is about ready to come back out in the course the leaders got by the main set of leaders second pack's gonna get by the rest are single file and thankfully that was it so good sign right there but that damage has already been done to that 39 Chevrolet there we may have a caution free race I don't know I don't want to jinx it, so. But right now, out in front is Nick Breeding. Or not Nick Breeding, Spear on Jack there in that 55. Both both the red cars are blending. I thought that was Breeding for a second. Now, Nick Breen looking underneath Onjak. Onjak, I'll tell you what, is, oh, look out. Here they come to Steve Pollard in the 57. Breeding's going to get by. Garcia having to check up a bit. And now, what's wrong with one damage S3 car when you can have two damage S3 cars to deal with there? Wow, Vince Freeze about tagging the apron right there. Garrett Sidner, Ryan Acosta, they're really kind of in a hornet's nest scenario. And these drivers, they know they got to be very careful with these lap traffic here. Mainly uh, Pollard and Sanford, but, you know, it's just, man, a bit of a yikes here. Halfway through, by the way, for those who have been uh, paying attention, Ryan Griffin's now back up into the fray. And some of these guys who really got held up from earlier starting to slowly work their way back up into the field there. Joseph Sprigley, Cole Baker, Austin Yoakum, they're just hoping, saying, hey, keep getting held up. That's good news for us. I have no idea why Steve Pollard's on the low line there. Should be on the high line. Let these low guys low on by. Colton Schwartz is having major difficulty trying to get around that 57. Now the right side being that the low line that it is. And Jackie Tane now stuck on the high line. He's trying to find what he can. Oh, and Crass is starting to get a little bit of a peak and can't seem to make the move. Looks 
It's like Stapleton's gonna get up there. And, oh, pit stops coming to mind. Oh, and, oh my goodness. But like, no, it's a hard hit. Oh my God. Oh my God. What a horrific wreck. And Sean Ard is on his roof down pit road. Oh my Jesus. That is horrifying there. And Bobby Frazier right now out in front. Oh my God. That is brutal. Oh, that is out of left field. I did not see that coming at all. And oh Jesus. That is brutal. And I saw it coming too. That 42 came late and. Oh, he went full throttle into that water barrel there. And Peter Onjak going to lead the field down. And holy Jesus, that was a lick. Oh, that is brutal. Primarily, it was two cars that got involved. That was Malik Nevins and Sean Art. And look at Malik Nevins' car as well as Sean Art. We're trying to find Nevins at the 12 because if you just seen his car, folks, that is destroyed. There it is. Oh, my goodness. That car is battered. And the guys who came down pit road earlier, they're uh, trying to get ahead of the pace car there and catch up to the rear of the field. So, caution's out. Let's take a look at ourselves. Our first caution today here at 8 Bowl. Well, I'm very glad we don't do injuries here, but this was probably one of the most horrific wrecks I've ever seen here in April in quite some time. Now, you see, drivers are making indications coming down pit road. Keep an eye on that 42 on the top screen you're seeing, and the 12 here both make very late calls and come into pit road, so I have no idea why they did that. I mean, Nevins should have just stayed out. That's a late, late attempt. He just did not turn hard enough, and man, destroyed that barrel there. Oh, Shonar just clipped him, and he... Oh, he actually got a little piece of Alex Tanker, but the gravity actually had the momentum and flipped him over on his roof coming down the pit lane. And you see what the spectators are over there. I don't think they really saw that one coming. Holy cow, that is unbelievable. You know, I'm seeing a, a, a bunch of firsts lately in the last couple of seasons, and this definitely, uh, that's definitely a first. I've never seen that happen before. I mean, I've seen the pace car come in at the end of the race under yellow just hit the pit wall, but I've never seen two cars do this before. <laughs> See if we can uh, take a look at uh, Nevins of how fast he was going, and uh, uh, we'll take a look in the helicopter angle here because that was a very vicious hit. We're under a red flag, by the way, and... Uh, oh, that was brutal. Okay, let's see what happened here. Let's see if the speed... He was going... Yeah, he started to slow down a little bit, but then... I think, oh, I think it's a probably Schwartz and all of them were right there. And, oh, man, I think you just seen it, folks. I was trying to back up the nick of time. Oh, he didn't even slow down. That was like 202 to 167. And, I mean, oh, my God. Oh. Jesus. And Madison Tall and Daniel Bouchard, I don't know how they missed that, but. Sean R. Not so lucky. And you can see right there, he just actually clipped Alex Tanker in the 50. But, well, folks, that's definitely going to be screenshot worthy. I could tell you that without a doubt. Whew, what a vicious wreck that was. Cautions out for the first time today here at April. Let's take you back to the green. Well, this is going to be a little bit of a wonky restart. Adam Garcia is technically the leader. But if you also noticed, him and Nick Breeding actually have some damage on their cars. You see, they're both the leaders. Out of the race, there's... Oh, we got a... Oh, what happened to uh, some other drivers? Sanford's out of the race. Daniel Bouchard, Nathan Stapleton... Man oh, what happened to these guys? I didn't even see what happened. Oh, my. Pollard is currently a lap down, but... What happened to Tanker, Evans, and Stapleton, and Bouchard? Oh, Jesus. And then we, we just take a look here. We have 23 cars all together here. And oh, my God. I can't wait to see what the heck even happened. Garcia out in front. Second breeding. Third Hanley. Fourth Owen. Fifth Friesen. Sixth Freeze. Seventh Onjak. Eighth Almeriego. Ninth Hamill. Chameleon Top 10. Garrett Sidner. Now, remember, from behind Peter Anjek, or, uh, or ahead of Peter Anjek, excuse me, 
stayed out on the course, the top six. They came down pit road previously. Green flag back underway. Everyone else here, they came down pit road and were behind the pace car when the caution came out. And Joseph Sprigley, I believe, also has damage in the 0-1. I think. No, no, no. Never mind. I don't know. Boy, uh, I can't wait to see uh, what the heck even happened to Garcia, Breeding, and others that I, I guarantee you if you're named uh, Daniel Bouchard, Charles Sanford, Nathan Stapleton, Amanda Evans, and uh, Alex Tanker, I can't wait to check out what happened there, but Garcia just lost the lead to Nick Breeding. And now Owen trying to do a crossover. Couldn't do it. And he's seen that six cars falling apart there. And now Sprigley's one lap down. I guess he does have some damage, but I don't know if he's got engine damage. I I don't know. This is, uh, we're going to take a look right here. And at least from what I'm seeing, he doesn't look like he has any problems, but. Oh, I don't see any problems. No. Uh, no, I don't see any. So, oh, well, apparently the 98 had tire damage. That's the only one I could see that did, but... Nothing about Sregley, though. I'm kind of a little uh, skeptical there, but that's kind of weird. Anyways, uh, we work our way back up. Now Nick Breen's getting freight trained in the two. I have no idea how that 57 is up to speed somewhat there, but he is. And right now, Ryan Acosta out in front. Here comes Derek Hamill in the 47 looking for the lead. So, folks, after this race, if we don't have another caution, uh, we will look at it. And I believe right now, if we have another caution on lap 26 or lap 27, we definitely will end the race under yellow. Which, never mind, that's going to end it right from the leaders. Look out below. Hamill leads the line. That's Mass. It's all 80. And they're going to wreck in front of the field. Almriego on Jack. Car upside down. That's, or not upside down. It's Crassa. Bobo Jones into the wall. Oh, dear Lord. What the heck even happened? Nicholas Guerra. Oh, Jesus. Good news for some of these guys. They're going to be, gonna be back with the rest of the pack, but that's going to end the race right there. I'm pretty sure that is. Derek Hamill. Man just picked up his first career win in the Xfinity Series. And uh, I believe second place because Bobby Frazier just got wrecked. Oh, man. Sky, or, uh, Eli Bright. The Max just got whacked in the rear end, too. Holy Toledo. What the heck even is this race anymore? Man, this went from uh, kind of confusing to um, everything else in between there. And with the 41 having an issue, Vince Freeze is now P2. But I believe Hamill just may have picked up his first career Xfinity victory here. And man, they wrecked in two different spots. And I saw the 80 car go around and Travis Crampton, Adam Garcia, they're destroyed. Onjak's retired. Acosta's involved. Demax is coming down pit road. Jones is trying to ride the banking for whatever reason. Now wisely goes to the apron. Man, I don't even know where to begin. Let's take a look at ourselves our second caution. So I didn't do this earlier, but this is actually what did not bring out the caution. It's going to start with Sanford and Amanda Evans. And Amanda actually turned Sanford into Sanford's teammate Steve Pollard. And I don't know how the 57 with his damage that caused them to lose that much. But man, that was a kind of bit of an oomph right there. So this is what brought our second caution. And again, Nico Ketchum uh, being a little bit of an overaggressive rookie right there. And this isn't the first time that 44 has done that this season. I think that's like the third time that 44 has done it. Out of all people, too, Madison Tall in the 80. Clips that target Chevrolet. 
Nose dives it off the inside wall and catch him. Uh, Rex himself as well as Matthew Eves on the 36. He was just minding his own business there. and He was just an innocent victim, your previous race winner. I don't think he's going to be too happy with that 44 there at all. And Caution came out. Those guys that didn't get involved, that was a lucky break for them, despite the fact they already crossed the line. But here's the problem. That 80 car is disabled. You can see that perfectly clear. And the worst part is, look, at the leaders are right there. And that is one of the scariest sights. And, oh, Bobo Jones got got into him there. Oh, my goodness. And then we'll look at that wreck in a second. Oh, my goodness. Oh, that's, oh, dear Lord. That's the second car to hit that pit wall. Oh, my God. Oh. Oh, my. Oh, this is going to be a replay here. Well, Bobo Jones just, mm, just got the back end. And I don't think anyone else hit the, uh, the 80 car. Oh, Sicoli did as well. Oh, oh my Jesus. Oh, Miller flipped over the pit wall. Oh, my God. Oh. That disabled in the 33 right there. And Thank God Tall uh, didn't get whacked again. But Oh, oh, my God. Um, yeah, this definitely... Uh, well, the next one I want to look at is Peter Onjak because, uh, well, Peter, I seen him go around as well, and I seen him collect the 41. So you see the smoke. Let's uh, go to the helicopter angle if we can see exactly what happened. So they were all trying to avoid the 80. Wisely didn't hit the pit wall. I'm amazed. Oh, he came back onto the course, and Alvarado just turned him there, and Actually, I'm kind of curious. Oh, they were checking up with the, uh, catch him, the 44. How'd the 41 get involved? Unless he blew a motor. I think the 41 may have blown a motor. But there you see, they're going to wreck right there. Eli Bright, Nicholas Guerra. Max gets a bump from Cinder. Hoff gets turned by Jay Cook going into that 0-9. Nick Breen's going to go for a slide. Man, Crass, you've seen him earlier. Oh, Owen got whacked by Sprigley. There's Garcia. He's going to get involved right there. And now the last part of that wreck that... uh. I think that's going to be under that part right there, which indeed the case it was, is what the heck happened to Andrew Miller in the 98, who probably, I think safe to say, took one of the wildest rides at April. And man, I thought the uh, Malik Nevins wreck was bad. I think uh, Miller just took the cake right there. Holy cow. Oh, and almost the same thing, but this was all different. They were just trying to avoid the 80 car. Oh, and he just turned Nicholas Guerra. And oh, my goodness gracious. Miller's own teammate, Gary Owen, just pl plummeted the, the 98 over the pit wall while also barrel rolling himself. And you see the 90 actually went on top of the pit wall. Oh, dear Lord. Two cars just hit that pit wall there and all within a span of 10 laps and Where's Owen at? Oh, there he is. And oh man, he just went for a tumble as well. And you see he landed on four wheels you just noticed earlier too. And oh my god. And you can see he was following his own teammate in the tire tracks. And he was just trying to move up. And oh my god, he had a little help from Jackie to Garrett Sinder in the 24. <laughs> I'm amazed he did not get hit right there on that portion of the wreck. And Oh my god, that is absolute death and brutal shit. Oh my god. I hate to say it like that, folks, but man, Crass also whacking Ryan Acosta there and Oh boy, that was a wicked crash there. Hamill out in front. Now before we go back to green, let's see what happened to those drivers before. Like Charles Sanford, we can find what happened. Oh, there's where Fraser what happened. He blew up right there. Coming off of one and two. Wow. What a tough blow for Bobby Frazier in the 41. So we don't have a full replay of the wreck that happened. 
But I believe what actually had happened was that these group of guys were trying to catch up, and I believe Sanford got spun out. And Breeding Garcia and Tanker all were the ones that hit him, as well as Joseph Srigley in the 0 1. This is the only type of footage we have. We came to uh, look at the first wreck. We had kind of paused the thing and then accelerated. And this was the after result. But keep in mind, Garcia and Breeding were leaning at the time. But oh my god, I don't. What a meme this race has become. Holy cow. So just kind of wanted to showcase that part and try to make sure everyone knows what's going on there. So, oh boy, cup race is going to be wild. I can tell you that. Let's take you back to see if Haram Hamill's going to get his first career victory. Well, this carnage face, this carnage race, whatever I could say, I don't even care. It's going to be a one lap shootout. I don't even believe it. There are quite a number of drivers out of the race. Too many to even count, but I'll do what I can. Mazatall, Hall, Joseph Srigley, Joshua Sicoli, Brandon Krasa, Jonathan Hoff, Gary Owen, Andrew Miller, uh, Nicholas Guerra, Peter Onjak, Vid Salmariego, Bobby Frazier, Bobo Jones. I believe are all out of the race. And right now, there's a total of... 18 drivers that are there. Drivers lap down as well, but one lap dash. It's going to be down to Hamill, Freeze, Freezing, and Eli Bright. Battle for the win. Green flag back underway here at 8 Bowl. One lap to go for the SCCA 280. Hamill's trying to do what he can to run away from Vince Freeze. Freeze in the 90, all over the back bumper. Pollard's looking underneath Freeze for whatever, for whatever reason there. Freeze looks like he's going to be content to second place. Derek Hamill, car number 47. I guess we're starting off the season with five first-time winners. How about it, folks? Freeze is not going to go underneath. He's not going to go for it. It's going to be a little too late. Derek Hamill, at first time winning the Xfinity Series, he wins the Meme Fest of the NSDCA 280 at 8 Bowl. Unbelievable. Derek Hamill will get the job done and will take a gigantic victory. Unbelievable. Hanley snuck in for third. Freeze will get fourth, Bright fifth. Garrett Sidner sixth, survived all the cast. How about Ryan Griffin, Patrick Smith, Austin Yoakum, and Skylar Dixon? Four guys who were in the rear of the field most of the, most of the day there, and they're going to come away with top ten. Skylar Dixon definitely needed that run for sure, hands down. Derek Hamill, the winner. I guess now we can show all this right here. Top 20 all out from, or uh, top 19 finished the race all together. 18 cars on the lead lap. Wow. And there is the thing from here for the rest of the field all on to out of the race. Until then, thank you guys for watching the SDCA 280 here at April. If you like, make sure you get a like, comment, your thoughts, subscribe part of the channel, and subscribe button down below. You've been watching Production of the Intercell, where racing is living. Until then, congrats to Derek Hamill on winning his first career Xfinity Series race here at April. Until then, goodbye, everybody. See you for the cup race tomorrow. Until then, here come the points in the video, like always. Till then, goodbye, everybody.